so what is the what is the pestifer kingdom this comes from the latin word the latin word pestifer which means injurious causing much damage baleful plagues pest pestilence destructive uh, noxious pernicious and pestiferous it refers to anything extremely bad or mischievous and um and also can pertain to things that are like uh, foul smelling. And if you understand this kingdom I'm going to talk about, it pertains to the earth. So if you think about all the things that are in the earth, from the things that grow above it to all of the things that we mine out of the earth, okay, whether it be minerals or whatever, okay. And if you notice the combination of all of these different things used, whether it's used in manufacturing, whether it's used in all this stuff, you will. Um, you'll also understand too how the the, the smile going aspect can, can come into play there. So it's the it's a it's a dwelling of rebellious angels, like what I talked about. Principalities, okay, which is another form of of, of an angel. Powers and demonic spirits of the forest, bush and shrub, the deserts, the mountains, and other areas of land. Okay, these can also be called territorial spirits, like I briefly mentioned earlier about territorial warfare. It can also be called territorial uh, spirits because it pertains to the actual territory of, of the earth. Okay, they may have or take the shape of a human or may manifest in their true self. Okay, now, and we can, we, we see this because we know in scripture that it tells us that, you know, um, we can entertain angels unaware. So this tells us that, you know, the only way we're going to be able to be unaware of entertaining an angel, it would be in human form. Because, okay, so they can take shape and human form. In the spiritual realm, okay, catch this. In the spiritual realm, these demons, the demons, have the appearance and can have the appearance and characteristics of fairies, pixies, gnomes, ogres, leprechauns and elves this is where a lot of these things come from when it, it comes from like movies being made and shows and you know they have these statues and people putting this different stuff right we know that uh there's the kids company that makes all these movies that pertains to all of these things all of this stuff like you can learn a lot really from that kids company for for the fact that all of that stuff that they put out it's not stuff that's just imagined in the mind it's stuff that they actually know that comes from the spirit realm, from the kingdom of darkness in the spirit realm. It's seen in the spiritual, okay? And a lot of these people, because they're high ranking um, in certain secret societies and all this different stuff, right? They've done many, many things to acquire the wealth. They've done many things to acquire the knowledge, okay? So when you have all of the, this stuff, the kingdom of darkness floods these people with wealth, floods them with spiritual information, Okay, it's how a lot of this stuff gets uh, put out there. And we see like even that mo the the movie that that has been made into all kinds of things, uh, kids stuff, right? Which is where the boy is um, the boy is a wizard, right? He has wizard friends, and they go to the school and all that stuff, right? Like if you know anything even about the history of all that and how this lady even acquired all of that information, like all of these things are stuff that really takes place in the spirit realm. And, and we're just out here in the world like la di da you know, like we don't, you know, and, until someone really, yeah, 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 she, she said it, yep. Yeah. So, um, so all, all of these things are, are created in the natural because they have been given through revelations, through visions, right? A lot of these people that are in secret uh, societies, they astral project, right? The enemy or a demonic spirit will come and will take them in the spirit realm, okay? Show them different things. Um, they'll have visions and dreams and all that type of stuff. Okay. So this is the kingdom of green magic. I'm sure you could probably understand that a little bit with it being the earth. Okay. So this is the kingdom of green magic. Okay. The, when I talked about the, the other two kingdoms, the cosmic, uh, kingdom and the pandemonium kingdom and one having white magic and the other one having red magic. And I did receive like a testimony even this week of somebody that was involved in some deliverance and actually called those specific things out, those colors of magic. And the person went, uh, I shouldn't say the person, obviously, we know it was the spirit, but these demons went haywire. Okay, so 
this is the kingdom of green magic. And so um, we we can see some of this in like the going green type of stuff, right? That we've seen over the years of like about, you know, saving the earth, right? And I'm, and I'm, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong, uh, you know, with being more energy efficient and that sort of thing as well. So I'm not speaking out against that. What I am saying is that in everything that appears good, seems good, even if it starts out good, the enemy is going to find a way to come and manipulate, you know, some of it or the majority of it or half of it. Right. Or a percentage of it. Right. So there's even a lot of stuff that are that's even involved with that that has magic involved in it. OK. And magic is just the, the governing term for all witchcraft that would pertain to that that category. OK. And as I get into this about the witches and warlocks, for those of you who weren't on the last live, um, there are different witches that that work specifically in these various kingdoms so for a lot of years we just thought oh there's witches and warlocks right and we just got witchcraft coming uh, against us or you know in, in the bloodline and all this different stuff right but the truth of the matter is is there's witches warlocks and wizards and they're assigned specifically to work and operate from these kingdoms so you have witches and warlocks in this earth that specifically work in blue magic which comes from the marine kingdom okay like you have witches and warlocks and wizards that specifically work in green magic that work in the things of the earth. And like I explained uh, the last live, you will notice that when they do their rituals, their spells, all the stuff that they do, the ones who operate in the green magic, the ones I'm going to talk to you about, you'll notice that they, they use minerals from the earth. They use the leaves. They use trees. They use animal bones, right, that are out in the forest, in the woods. They'll go to specific places. If they're wanting to do specific spells over regions, they'll come into people's area. They'll go up into a high place where the where the enemy tells them to go. They'll, they'll take rock. They'll take tree. They'll take shrubbery from a high place in that area and go back and do the rituals and the witchcraft or whatever the, the, the kingdom of darkness is telling them to do over that. And they'll use those specific things from that geographical location to 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 put spells right and to work and operate in the witchcraft over over that area okay so again there's witches warlocks and wizards that work in these different kingdoms they specifically work in specific types of magic okay the ones that are more high ranking that have probably been in it for a long period of time right that have moved up and grown in their knowledge right and the demonic wisdom that's been given to them some of them probably work in like i said before multiple regions some of them probably work in, in in multiple magic or all of the magics okay so that way that the enemy can then send them to different places and locations they can pretty much do anything in any different regions right in any different region they can operate in different forms of magic if he wanted them go to go to a specific uh oceans or waters or do whatever and use water from that place, right? Use seaweed from certain oceans or certain coasts or whatever. And they use these things specifically in the blue magic, things that come out of the marine kingdom. They might use like a fish scales and just different different things, okay? But it's all for the purpose of, to, of, of the operation of that kingdom, okay? So again, this is the kingdom of green, green magic. So uh, nature sirens, are demonic entities they reveal the enigma of nature to use nature okay and all the things in nature the leaves uh you know bark trees certain types of trees okay as a point of contact for accessing divine powers from the pest uh the pest of world the pest for kingdom let me change this word to kingdom because I, I, I might put this out some at some point in time um on the website but uh, the lord is not telling me to do that right now so that's why i haven't put out these complete teachings right i have it all typed up uh minus the revelation and the stuff that i just talked to you about right but the the outline and everything's typed up but um the same reason i haven't put out the prayers uh just yet uh for each one of these kingdoms is just because to not everybody is called like i mentioned to you can war against these kingdoms on behalf of yourself and your bloodline. But I'm telling you, there's so many prophetic people out there that will try to lead you just to going and doing whatever. you And if you think you can go in the spirit realm and just do whatever, that in itself is witchcraft. And that's what these people tell you. They'll sell you a book on how to open the heavens and do all this other stuff. You don't want to do none of that stuff. If God, it sounds good prophetically. The words of everything sound good. They're selling, they're, they're, selling you books about um 
you know, defeating this witchcraft, defeating that witchcraft and all this other stuff. Like, and that's OK for your personal life or for your bloodline. But that's not what's talked about. They make it seem like you just go around the world and doing whatever and fighting and warfare and it's all the stuff. And then most of you want to know why you're really not getting the freedom that the word of God says that you're supposed to have in your life. Because you're following these false prophetic people deceiving you into believing that you can go and do whatever you want. And they don't care because they just want your money or they want you to sign up and buy their next ebook or go to their next course or, you know, whatever it is that they have to sell you. That's all they care about. Right. And they, they care about the likes, the shares, the follows. And the reason is because followers equal money. All right. Followers equal money. And they know that. Like I mentioned last weekend, if these people were true apostles and true prophets, ask yourself, why have they been apostles and prophets for five years, 10 years, 15, 20 years that they all brag about being right? I've been doing this for 10, 15, 20 years. Then why isn't nothing broken down in your region? If you're an apostle, why don't you govern no atmospheres? Why can't why don't you have no power to bring destruction upon any of these kingdoms? OK, and then second to that, if you're called to that, I'm sorry, but every single person I've seen uh, as far as scripture goes in the Bible, that's a prophet. They're, they're calling out people in the body of Christ. Right. You don't ever see none of these people that claim to be uh, prophets and apostles for all of these years. You don't ever see them standing up against anybody doing anything wrong in the body of Christ. You don't ever see them talking about anything, addressing anybody, nothing. Right. The people that are veering off in the music industry, right, the Christian music industry and all this stuff that we see all the time. You don't ever see none of these people who claim to be apostles and prophets ever speaking up and calling their name out and saying anything. But when you look at the word of God, that's what you see God's true prophets are. Right. So you have to start matching these things up. We could say, oh, look at the fruit. Well, I'll tell you, a lot of people don't even know what fruit should even actually look like. Because you can look at somebody and it can appear with the natural eyes like they have fruit. It can even sound to the natural ear. Again, I'm saying these things naturally. It could sound to the natural ear like they're using all these prophetic words and they seems like they know what they're talking about. Right. And they stand up and they just yelling and screaming, getting everybody hype emotionally, you know, emotionalism and sensationalism. And people are deceived thinking that that's the true prophetic. That's not. All right. So. Uh, witches, warlocks, and wizards that operate in earth magic, okay? Earth magic explores the world of natural healings and well-being, okay? Through the, uh, let me say this first, all right? And then I'm going to give a little uh, abbreviation to it, okay? So earth magic explores the world of natural healing and well-being through the use of plants, crystals, which are extracted from the earth, right? Spell casting, which I see my brother uh, Joe uh, put on here a few minutes ago, okay? Rites and rituals, okay? Nature spells, herbs, flowers, plants, and essential oils, okay? So now that I've said that, I will say that I believe wholeheartedly that the Lord has given us the things that he put here on this earth, right, for our benefit, okay? So I believe that there are things that are natural that God has given us to use. But like anything, I believe that met much of it, many, many things have been used uh, by the kingdom of darkness. Right. It's 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 especially when it comes like I was talking about the going green stuff. Right. And we see all of this stuff now. It's all about natural, all this natural stuff, natural, natural, natural. OK. It's not that I'm opposed to those things because I feel like and I truly believe that the Lord has placed these things here for us to be for our benefit. But the enemy has came in and brought so much manipulation, even in this stuff, like with the oils. OK, the, the stuff with herbs and all of these different things. I believe that there are some people out there that that. Are Christian that that genuinely have that God has given an understanding about some of these things, right? Natural remedies, things that you know that you know we can uh, drink or eat or whatever, right? That that can help with maybe a stomach ache or something of that nature. Okay, but but the enemy has came in and has polluted all of these things, and there's so much witchcraft now that's involved in so much of this stuff that like you really have to be discerning in order to know what to be involved in and what not to be involved in. You understand what I'm saying? So it's not like I'm completely just saying that there's no purpose in 
some things. I'm just simply saying that most of this stuff has been manipulated by the enemy, okay, to get people to use witchcraft things. These companies that do certain stuff, and we all know, like, we can look at the food companies, right, even then half the stuff that's in a lot of these processed stuff, it's not even really stuff that uh, really we should be eating, you know, a lot of it's chemical based and all this different stuff, okay, so, um, so, this uh, this next thing that I'm going to read, it's actually something that um, it's something that was a quote about um, uh, about witches and warlocks that that are involved in the green magic. OK, it's not anything that's going to open up the door to anybody. OK, so it's just a, it's just a, it's just revelation. OK, so it's not spoken by a witch or none of that stuff. OK, so the um, the otherworldly Oracle, which is a like a news type. Uh, publication or whatever that uh, overlooks news publications, book publications, that sort of thing, defines a green witch or warlock as someone who works with the elements, okay? The local land spirits, which I'm going to get into elemental spirits, okay? Some of you may know and understand this, but there are, there's tree spirits, okay? There's certain things that pertain to the earth, like when it says that the rocks cry out, you know that a physical rock in itself isn't able to cry out. But there's spirits that are attached to all these things that involve land, okay? And I'm gonna I'm gonna bring I have I have scripture, so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna get to that. So just ride with me for a minute. So that they they someone who works with the with the elements, local land spirits, and all things green. Okay, the green witch is able to harness the energies of the natural sources around them by developing close connections with local plant spirits, the trees, the wildlife, as well as with the earth itself, okay? These witches are similar to the healing ancestors, such as the, the uh, druids and the, and the shamans. You see it real big in the in shamanism, okay? There's a lot of people, if any of you have came out of New Age, um, or been involved highly in New Age and understand what any of them do, um, I, I will tell you now, that they are led by guides, which are demons, okay, Power, is powers of darkness. They will go out barefoot into nature, into certain areas. They'll go to parks in their area. They'll go into woods and forests in their area. And they'll go to these places that are in the points, the cardinal points even, of areas and cities, right? I'm telling you this because some of you who are called to do territorial warfare, you'll understand if God is calling you to go to these different cardinal points at the entrances of your city for the north, south, east, and west, because there's many demonic things that have already been taken place there that have already been declared in those areas, right? So they'll go to these places, they'll go to these parks, and they'll go barefoot. They'll go barefoot. And they'll they'll connect. They'll they'll get revelation. They'll get insight on what to say, what to speak, and what to what to declare from the realm of the spirit. Just like we do with God, we declare things. We're seated in heavenly places, right? Those who are purified, those who are made new, and those who have access to heaven. Okay, not just everybody who says they're a Christian is seated in heavenly places. Like what people will manipulate that scripture and make it out to be that everybody who claims Christ is just seated in heavenly places. Okay, and that's that's just not the case. Right? There's people who have access to heaven in certain ways that other people do not. It doesn't mean you never will. Okay, doesn't mean that you can't. It just means that you know some people might be uh, you know new believers and and that sort of thing. So, to, for us to go and just tell people that they have all of this access is really just a lie, because like it's like selling a book to somebody and telling them they can open the heavens, and then those people go in the spirit. They go and they pray. They go in the spirit, like just pressing in, just just waiting and believing in this faith that the heavens are going to open up for them. But if God didn't lead you there, you're doing witchcraft and the devil's going to send his spirits to be right there to open up a form of heaven for you. And it's not going to be the access of what you think it is. It's going to be a deceptive access and it can seem like heaven. It can seem glorious. It can seem like all of these other things. That's how these people end up in false prophetic. Okay. Because God isn't leading them by his spirit on the inside of them. If God doesn't tell me to get off this live and go pray over my city or do something, I should not be just saying, oh, I'm just going to go and pray over my city because I think that's what the Lord wants me to do. 
or he's called me to do it. So I'm just going to go and doing whatever I want. That's what these people do. That's how you end up in witchcraft. That's why you got all of these people that are Christian witches and Christian warlocks and they don't even know it. They legitimately think they're getting revelation from God and from the spirit of the Lord. And it's not because long ago, they thought that they were authorized to do things they didn't understand and they just went and they just started doing all this stuff and the devil's right there waiting on all these people that are out there selling you books telling you how to war against witchcraft and they are the witches and warlocks okay they have and, and they don't have any idea they just you know the, and the enemy will manipulate and do whatever it is that he wants whatever he whatever it is that he wants and the whole time they're thinking that it's god giving them all of this stuff they think it's God giving them revelation and God telling them to write the next book and to do this and to do this. Like, how how do you think, how do you really believe that God's telling you to do these things if you haven't even heard the Lord tell you that you're not allowed to go in the spirit realm and do whatever the heck you want? You're no different than a soothsayer or a sorcerer or, you know, somebody else uh, trying to read somebody's fortune or doing this other stuff. You're no different than these witches going in the spirit realm trying to astral project. That's literally what you end up doing. These demonic spirits come right along and they're allowed to take you to these places. People think that that's not allowed to happen because they say, oh, my spirit, my, my spirit is sealed and the devil can't touch me. You're stupid. I'm saying this to leaders, okay? Not to any of you that don't know, but like they, they, they're, they're stupid. That's how they ended up in all of this stuff in the first place. That's why they have no power. So God has taken you and telling you to do all this stuff as an apostle or a prophet, but you literally don't have no power that manifests in the natural realm. You've been an apostle for 15 years, but you don't have no authority over govern anything in your region or any region for that matter. You go to different places around the country and you claim that you're shifting atmospheres, but you ain't doing crap, man. You're not doing crap. You're deceived. You're deceived. And it's going to take all, all of that, all that flattery and that charismatic witchcraft that's been used. All of that stuff is getting destroyed. All of that stuff's coming down. All of that stuff's coming down. And, and the, the true remnant, the true saints, they're going to see all of these people for what they are. They're going to see all of this and they're going to they're going to they're going to understand what's really taking place and what's not taking place with all of these different people. OK, so. All right. So like I like I mentioned, um, OK, in the in the spiritual realm, these demons ha uh, have the appearances and the characteristics of fairies. Pixies, gnomes, uh, ogres, leprechauns, elves, that kind of thing, okay? So I'm just going to, I'm going to go over just like a couple of them. I didn't want to go in uh, too deep with all of them. Um, and after this, I'm going to go into the scripture. We're going to talk a little bit more about the elemental spirits, okay, of the world. And I'll give you, I probably have, it looks like maybe a half a dozen uh, scripture verses okay and then we'll go into the next kingdom okay so all right so uh we'll 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 start with uh the fairies okay the fairies they're a representation again if any of you uh, came out of new age or witchcraft or any of this stuff you will know the things like if if you know that and the lord is leading you to confirm anything you can you can put that in the comments if you want or if the lord tells you to do so Okay, um, uh, fairies. They are represent. They they represent the element of air. Okay, and again, these fairies are demonic spirits that are backed by demonic power. Okay, they just happen to have uh, take on appearances of of these things that I'm talking about. Okay, so I don't want you to get demons confused with uh, fairies or, or anything. I just want you to understand that these things that I'm talking about they're they're actually demons regardless of what they look like regardless of who's made them into movies or any of that stuff okay they're 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 demons okay so they represent the element of air they are spirits of the air in the kingdom of darkness their job is to destroy the purity of the air okay uh king james one and i'm we're uh, king james one i'm talking about the actual king james you know that you know the king james ended up right in the bible right so the first king james right stated the term fairies referred to demonic entities okay so this is something that's it's not just came about um now because we have uh because we have the internet right so we can figure this th things out right these are things that go back you know very far in in time and and history okay um 
that that prophes that prophesied to and consorted with and transported the individuals they served throughout history a witch or a sorcerer who had a pact with a familiar spirit might receive these services okay these services the 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 functions of of, of the fairies right that's why they make packs with a lot of these these uh these demons okay uh nymphs okay and i probably maybe i should have uh, possibly put this uh with the marine kingdom because it does pertain to, to the elements of water okay in the kingdom of darkness their role is uh kind of the most essential uh, to life on earth okay as water provides uh growing fuel in a way to plants and then of course to us right uh, it serves as a fundamental component for all creatures and plants to live and grow. Okay. Uh, the fairies, the pixies, the gnomes, the ogres, the leprechauns, the elves, they're all examples of these nature spirits, the elemental uh, creatures that I'm going to get in and talk about uh, with, with scripture. Okay. Um, it should be noted again that the elemental spirits also control uh, normal, what we consider normal processes like uh, weather. So write down Luke 4, 5, and 6. Luke 4, 5, and 6. Okay? And this is going to help you guys understand because, you know, there might be somebody that, some that come on here and they're like, man, what is this dude talking about? Like the kingdom of darkness is the kingdom of darkness. You know what I mean? So, but this is going to, this is going to drive home this point. Okay? It says, then the devil led him up, talking about Jesus. Now, I know all of you, uh, all of you, you know, remember this in scripture. I'm sure most of you have, have heard this before. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms, all the kingdoms of the world. Okay. He didn't just take him up and, uh, and offer him a kingdom. Okay. He showed him all the kingdoms of the world multiple plural and the devil said to him to you i will give their glory their collectively all of them and all this authority for it has been given over to me and i give it to anyone i please okay you have luke four five and six thank you guys for putting that um in the comments so next is ephesians 2 2 i guess i could do it as well it's only a copy and a paste for me so and you guys have instead of you guys having to look it up but ephesians 2 2 in which you formerly walked in which you formerly walked according to the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air of the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. This is a scripture that I had given right at the very beginning. Okay. The next one is Galatians 4 3. Okay. Galatians 4 3 says, In the same way we also, when we were children, were enslaved to the elementary principles of the world. Okay, so there's you know there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of people, especially when they teach that according to the natural mind. Okay, they just kind of classify that as the elementary principles of the world, right? The the ways of the world. That's kind of how a lot of them teach. But I'm going to go into this stuff. You're going to understand a, a little bit deeper of what these things actually are. Okay, because again, yeah, some of them, yeah, a lot of them do look like that. They they have taken those they have taken those types of creatures and and turned them into something that appears pleasant, right? Uh, from a youth, as as we all know, like a form of programming, a form of getting them to come into agreement. I mean, how many of us, maybe even as parents, you know, bought our young daughter certain things that may have had some of this stuff on it, right? How many people do you know? Uh, good evening, Jamie. How many people do you know? Um, you know, put gnomes in their yard and that sort of thing, right? 
I, I remember I bought my son one because he liked Purdue. This when he was younger, he ended up going there. But like I bought him this known that had Purdue on it, you know, like not knowing. So let's see. Okay, so that was Galatians uh four three. So this is gonna be Colossians two eight. Put that in there. Okay. Yep, conditioning. Yep. That's exactly what it's doing. It and like I said, it conditions it's it's wild because it doesn't really just condition the child, right? Like before we knew all this stuff, it kind of conditioned us as parents to allow our children. We like we are the ones that had to purchase these things for our kids, right? Whether it's the movies, you know, my kids, I never, I haven't watched TV, like I've never had cable my entire life as an adult, unless it came free with the internet or something, right, for a certain period of time. Uh, um, so I've, I've never really watched TV, I don't watch sports, I don't do any of that, like, I, I get hype when my kids have played sports all the years, that, you know, growing up and they've, they've all played sports and stuff, but um, that's like the only sports that, you know, that I care about. The only reason I know what goes on in sports when it comes to certain things is if I see people post stuff. I don't even know who plays in like the World Series or none of those things. It just doesn't matter. None of those things matter to me. Um, all right. So Colossians 2 8 says, See to it that no one takes you captive. Okay. Please understand. Please. Please gain a spiritual understanding of why these things are put in the in the same context, right? In in the same sentencing. It says, see to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit according to human tradition. Human traditions are only going to be made according to human minds, human mindsets, okay? I mean, there's other, obviously, these things come forth from a spiritual nature, but I'm not talking, but not the spirit of God, okay? According to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world and not according to Christ, it says, okay? So see to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit, according to human traditions, according to the elemental spirits of the world. It's clearly stating here that the elemental spirits of the world are directly attached to what? Human tradition, empty deceit, and philosophies okay see to it that no one take you captive by philosophy and empty deceit according to human tradition according to the elemental spirits of the world and not according to christ okay so colossians again a little bit further down in two right so we're Colossians 2, 20 to 22. It says, if with Christ you died to the elemental spirits of the world, so it's bringing it back up again, okay? So it's saying, don't let no one take you captive. And then you got everybody saying, okay, we're not being ta taken captive, okay? By any philosophy, empty deceit, or human traditions according to the elemental spirits of the world. So everybody's saying, nope, okay, that's not us. We're not doing that, okay? So he's saying, if with Christ then, you die to those elemental spirits of the world, okay? Why as if you were still alive in the world, do you submit to the regulations according to the human precepts and teachings? You guys catching that in the spirit? So a little bit further down, same chapter, saying everybody's saying, okay, we're not doing that. We're not going to be deceived. Right, we're not be persuaded by empty deceit and all these things. He's saying, okay, so with if Christ you died to the elemental spirits of the world, like you're saying, why, as if you were still alive in the world, do you submit to regulations according to the human precepts and teachings? And remember, he's talking to the body of uh, he's what well, would be talking to uh, what we would consider Christians in today's time, okay. Whether they're born again or not born again, specifically, um, is it's not the case. He's he's speaking to uh, he's speaking to Christians. I I, I was going to say like the body of believers, but to me, Christians and body of believers are kind of two separate things. If you understand what I'm saying, the body of believers is to me is like the true remnant. So, all right, so. 
uh, note that Paul equates the elemental spirits of the world with regulations, human precepts, and teachings, okay? In verse 8, like we initially went over, he links the elemental spirits to human tradition and philosophy. The spirits, uh, the spirits here are de the demonic spirits who promote, build, speak, teach false doctrine, okay? False prophetic ministries, uh, false prophecies, okay? And all the false apostles, prophet, evangelists, uh, preachers, and teachers, okay?